What up, peeps? Tony Baker here, back with another top 10, okay? Since Christmas is coming, you know what I'm saying? A lot of you parents might be buying toys for your kids. So I got to thinking about the toys I grew up with in the 80s. So I'm gonna rank my top 10 80s toys, okay? So I'm gonna let you know right now, Care Bears aren't showing up, My Little Pony, cause you know, Rainbow Bright. I remember these toys, but I didn't play with them. So I don't want everybody getting bent out of shape. I didn't play with the, the girl toys, you know? I don't wanna, you know, I don't wanna set off a gender war, but I just wasn't playing with My Little Ponies and she riding them, man. All right, I, I, I'm just need everybody to accept it. So my, my, my list is gonna vary. Let's get into it, man. Number 10, Tonka Trucks. The big construction metal that was probably not good for me, Tonka trucks, man. I had this dump truck that I used to always play with. I had a dump truck, the truck with the big grappling hook that twisted around and picked stuff up. I played with these trucks all the time. And then it was dope when I would combine the Tonka trucks with my other toys. Cause the Tonka trucks were kind of big, heavy. I threw them at my older brothers when they would piss me off. But that Tonka truck sent a message, man. Tonka trucks, my number 10. Number nine, Play-Doh. I used to always work with the Play-Doh, man. My thing, my favorite thing with Play-Doh was this thing called the sizzling skillet, okay? It was like, you know, I've always loved food. So even as a kid, I had the sizzling skillet. My mom bought me the sizzling skillet more than once. And so it's like, you can make your own food, you know, you put it through the thing, you can make like Play-Doh spaghetti, toast, eggs, pancake and then you put it on the little sizzling skillet and it made that noise like you were really cooking in there and like I think back like man that was a very simple toy but it was so dope I was in there really oh you want some breakfast I got you I was making breakfast for the whole family don't eat it though yeah but play-doh was my number nine the sizzling skillet number eight hot wheels I used to always have the Hot Wheels going, man. I used to have like a team of good guys and bad guys. My good guy team, it was this Hot Wheels Porsche. It was a black Porsche that I used to always play with. He was the leader of the good guy. Now, I used to just have a ball with those, just like all over the place, sliding them across the kitchen floor. Now, it was just fun. Hot Wheels is just simple fun. And then we had the big racetracks. So now we, we had the stunts going. The racetracks though, we got into trouble with the Hot Wheels racetracks. I remember we used to pop my dad's mouse traps with the racetracks, we, we got in trouble for that. But it was, you know, it was a good time. Cause the racetrack, you know, you had your, you had your distance on it. You, you could pop the mouse trap from a distance. He like, what are y'all doing? I'm like, we just popped it. You know, the mouse wasn't coming. So we figured we just pop it with the, with the Hot Wheels track. And then we got popped. We got popped after that. But the Hot Wheels, man, it was going down. Whatever car you was into, you could find. Remember those big race cars with the big engine sitting through the hood of the car? Man, Hot Wheels, man, that was a good time. Hot Wheels, number eight. Number seven, the big wheel. The big wheel, man. You hop on that thing, you grab the handlebars, and you work the pedals of the big wheel. One big wheel in the front, two smaller wheels in the back, and the little brake thing on the side. Oh, I used to love my big wheel. I had a Dukes of Hazard big wheel. So that means I was riding around the streets of Chicago in the Dukes of Hazard big wheel with the Confederate flag on there. Cause that's what was on the car. <laughs> I had no clue what the Confederate flag represented as a kid, but I didn't care, man. I was in these alleys in Chicago riding the big wheel. Matter of fact, I'm sure they have them now. Big wheels for adults, I want one because the big wheel was mad for him. Remember, remember in The Shining, when that little kid was riding around the hotel, he, he was on the big wheel type joint. And man, let me tell you something. If I would have seen some twins at the end of my hallway, I'd have blasted off on that big wheel. It'd have been flame thrust out the back. I'd have been out of there. I'd have lifted off, went past the moon like E.T. and Elliot. I'd have got the hell out of there Then my Dukes of Hazard big wheel. Big wheel, number seven. Number six, visionaries. A lot of people probably don't remember this because the cartoon didn't last that long. Probably lasted for like a season or two. Visionaries, they were these action figures. They were kind of like nightly dudes, but they had holograms on their chests. You know, whatever hologram they had, that, that animal or creature would manifest. They could like turn into that creature. But then they had a staff too. So whatever the staff was, it was somebody they could they could call when they needed them. Like the guy I had, he had like the dude, the, the god of wisdom would come out of the staff. And it was like all holograms in the chest. So you move them around and they would move inside. And I was like, yo, man, visionaries. This was dope. But the cartoon didn't last long. So they didn't make a ton of action figures that I could play with. But for that little bit of time, man, I was all in. The holograms were cool. I was like, yo, this is fun, man. So look it up, man. You can find, you can probably find an episode or two on um 
on YouTube or something like that, or even the commercial, just to see what I'm talking about. But I had a good time with Visionaries. That's why they're my number six. All right, number five, He-Man. He-Man, the Masters of the Universe, and all those guys. Everybody, first of all, everybody was cock diesel. Everybody was super swole, just muscle. Everybody was all muscle. There was no regular shape. The only, the only one in the He-Man universe that had a regular body was Ram Man. He was just a square dude and you press him, then he did the ram move. Everybody else was just shredded. But I, I played with He-Man, I had He-Man, Beast Man, Skeletor, Man at Arms, and uh, everybody was just swole. But they were fun though. I combined them, playing with my other toys. You, you had the big swole and he was the strong one of the group. So you needed him to carry the couch pillows, you know what I'm saying? Like I threw the couch pillows in there and if you were strong enough, you could throw the couch pillow and just flatten everybody else. That was the plan. It was a good time. He-Man, Masters of the Universe, my number five. Number four, Battle Beast. Not a lot of people probably remember Battle Beast. I love Battle Beast. They were so little, but you can get, they had weapons, they were like animals, with like armor on, they had like different types of armor, and they had a symbol. Each, each Battle Beast represented a different crew. You had wood, fire, and water. In the commercials, they set it up. You know, fire beats wood because it'll burn wood. Water beats fire because obviously the water puts out the fire. And then wood beats water. So you could just play like that. I never really paid attention to the symbols that they had. You know, it was kind of cool like to, to click everybody off. But usually I just made my own teams. And like, I love Battle Beasts, man. Like the weapons they came with. And every time you bought them, it was like two per pack. So you got two out the gate. And the first two I got was this rhinoceros and he had like a mace hand, just a ball with a spike on it. And this like fox looking dude. And those were my first two and I'm like, yo, I need more Battle Beasts. And I started collecting them, man. Battle Beasts is my number four. All right, number three, Legos, man. I really enjoy Lego, man. It was just, you can make a simple vehicle or you can make a whole gas station. I was proud of myself when I assembled my own gas station. I had a ball with it, man. And you're like, you know, you read the directions, you build it. You, re you really feel like you accomplished something. When you put a whole Lego gas station together, you really felt like an architect. I like that. And I would just make my own little flying vehicles and little tanks and stuff like that. And they would just shatter. And that was a good thing about Lego. You could just destroy it and reassemble it yourself. And then like McDonald's was in on it, they would give you like a little like, you know, Lego to put together, like a horse or something like that you could make real quick. It was dope, man. I still like Lego to this day. Matter of fact, I'm overdue for buying something. I'll probably get like a Star Wars spaceship to put together just, just to do something with, with your mind, man. You know, just to unplug from social media, just put together a Lego uh, vehicle or like a gas station or something. Challenge your mind, man. You feel good after you do it. And then when you get mad one day, you can come in and destroy it and then rebuild it. Lego, man, my number three. Number two, Transformers, man. Transformers is my number two, man. The last time I bought a Transformer for myself was probably 2007. And when the movie, when the first movie came out, I got excited again, I felt nostalgic, and I got, I bought Barricade and Starscream. I still have Starscream in my apartment right now. The Transformers are so dope. They were hard to change, though. Some of them are really hard to transform, and they'd be like, once I turn you into a vehicle, you're gonna stay the vehicle. Because, man, turn, turning them into a robot was a challenge. My favorite Transformer that I ever owned was Jetfire. And he looked like a Robotech. You remember Robotech Jets? That's what he looked like. You can bring the legs out and still have the top part be a jet before you completely. He was the best Transformer I ever had and he was huge. You could tell they just straight got the idea from Robotech. They were just shy of calling it Robotech, but he was outstanding. I had Jazz. You had the little easy one to transform, like uh, Cliffhanger and Bumblebee. They were real easy, because they were little. And then, you know, I don't want to knock them, but GoBots was so low budget. The Leader One and the Scooter, they were so low budget. They were small and like cheap, and like they, you couldn't put a gun in the, it was so low budget. But Transformers, man, you got your money's worth, man. Man, it was something I was scared to even get. I was scared to get Megatron, because I knew he was going to be hard to change. I was like, I don't even want that. Because Megatron used to be an actual gun. And then, you know, times change. They were like, we can't have a gun for the kids. Like, oh, all right. Anyway, Transformers, my number two. My number one toy of all time in the 80s, G.I. Joe. 
G.I. Joe is easily my number one and the toys I played with the longest because I had more longevity with G.I. Joe's. I could do I could do more scenarios with them. Uh, you know, the variety was different. I could put them in vehicles. They could run around. I could put them in the Tonka trucks. I could have them fighting the He-Man toys. It, it was, the possibilities were endless. I could just make a whole movie with these cats. And G.I. Joe's were my main fun source as a kid. Before video games took over, G.I. Joe was life. They were everywhere, man. I had them all over the place. I had a bunch of them. And uh, I was still buying them as an adult. I still had some even then. So G.I. Joe is my number one toy of all time. And the, the little G.I. Joes, man, let's go, man. I want some right now. But let me know, man, what'd you grow up playing with? Man, let me know in the comment section below your favorite toys. Give me your top five toys growing up, man. Cause I know our ages vary, so I'd like to see what you played with growing up. Don't say video games. Give me actual toys. And uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as usual, we out here.